Hey everybody, this is Joshua with the Tendonitis Expert. And this video is about Levoquin Tendonitis Basics. And some of this is critical information. So if you're hurting from Levoquin or you have a loved one that's hurting from Levoquin or any other fluoroquinolones, because they're all essentially the same, then this is good information for you. So fluoroquinolone antibiotics are a class of antibiotics. And antibiotics are classed depending on how they function, their mechanism for how they attack or kill or disrupt or stop the bacterial process. So fluoroquinolones act in a certain way, and they're a little bit famous for having some serious side effects. There have been several that have been removed from the market by the uh, FDA. And you know, if the FDA is actually removing a pharmaceutical from the market, it's got to be pretty bad. But these are still left on the market. And Levaquin is one of the most common, most famous followed by Cipro. So Levoquin, Levofloxacin, Cipro, Ciprofloxacin, Avalox, which is Moxifloxacin, Noxin, which is Norfloxacin, Floxin, Ofloxacin, and essentially most anything ending in Floxacin or Oxacin or Acin is something to pay attention to if you're in the hospital and they say, hey, we want you to take this. So along those lines, knowing what I know about fluoroquinolone antibiotics, Unless my life is literally on the line, I do not want fluoroquinolone antibiotics. Partially because they're giving fluoroquinolones for acne nowadays, or minor things where there are alternative and less problematic antibiotics that can be given. Fluoroquinolones, while doctors still kind of don't really believe that there's bad side effects for the most part, and for the most part they think that antibiotics are great without any downsides, and certainly they couldn't have given you anything that's caused severe side effects. But in my experience of people with fluoroquinolone side effects, often the side effects are worse than whatever they were in there for in the first place. So again, unless, unless your life is on the line, you might want to reconsider taking a fluoroquinolone like Levoquin because the side effects are bad, or at least can be bad. So... This is a topic I hear a lot. So there's a certain confusion often because the names are similar between regular tendon, oops, regular tendonitis. Let's try that again. Regular tendonitis and Levoquin tendonitis. So briefly, tendonitis, let's say this is a muscle and that's a tendon. Generally, real tendonitis has various factors involved, but essentially, Muscles get tight, they pull on the tendon 24-7, and eventually that irritates and inflames the tendon, so there's tendon pain, and usually also muscle pain and various other symptoms involved, but that's essentially the mechanism. Whereas with Levoquin tendonitis, let's say there's a muscle and a tendon, with Levoquin tendonitis you can have one of three things happen. The first and hopefully the, hopefully the only problem you have layer is nutritional depletion. So you take Levoquin, it depletes various nutrition and often massively, and that causes instant decrease in function. So muscles can't function correctly, tendons can't function correctly, muscles that were this long get short and tight, partially due to pain that's caused and partially due to the magnesium insufficiency depletion and other nutrition as well. And so then you have super tight muscles constantly pulling on tendons constantly but way more than over here second level is mitochondria mitochondria damage or uh, mitochondria are the power plants of the cells so think of them as a population or a herd so levoquin can kill off some of the mitochondria in a in connective tissue and that causes all sorts of problems, including actual damage. So partial damage or complete rupture. That's why you can go to the hospital with pneumonia, for instance, get one dose of Levaquin, wake up the next morning, and your Achilles tendon, for instance, totally ruptured because the mitochondria died, so the cells died, so the structural integrity of the structure essentially disappeared. The worst level is DNA damage. So when you get DNA damage to connective tissue, because for whatever reasons fluoroquinolones target connective tissue, 
When you get DNA damage, you can get some element of partial or total rupture, some amount of tendon damage, and that can be joint damage and cartilage damage as well. And when it heals back, it heals back bad because the DNA is damaged. So as it heals, it just heals back bad. So that means you still have structural problems. You still have easy rip and tear. You still have uh, all sorts of pain and problem. So ideally, all you have is nutritional depletion. Realistically, you're going to have that and maybe some of that and hopefully not some of that. Just all depends on your particular body, your particular scenario, and what happened. So point being... Regular tendonitis is not at all the same thing as Leviquin tendonitis. Leviquin tendonitis is really a misnomer. Now we're calling it, now we're calling it FQ, poor quinolone toxicity, just because that denotes a much larger impact to the ecology of your body. Regular tendonitis, super easy to fix. Leviquin tendonitis, not so easy to fix. So another thing I hear a lot is, and there may be a certain small amount of truth to it, but let's just go with that. Leviquin is actually out of your system relatively quickly, even though you have symptoms for months and years and decades and even a lifetime. So people think that if they're still having pain 10 years later, it's because the Leviquin is still actively hurting them. But that's not actually the case. Leviquin is out of your system, for the most part, pretty quickly. But the reason you still have pain years, months, decades, lifetime later, is because, again, looking at nutritional depletion, mitochondrial damage, and DNA damage. So imagine this is a bucket, it's a terrible looking bucket, and ideally your nutrition is full, your bucket is full. But really, at least in the States, we're all pretty nutritionally insufficient, unfortunately, so we have a not very full bucket anyway. And then we take Leviquin or some other fluoroquinolone, and it dumps our bucket over, psh, so then all of a sudden we have only this much nutrition. Plus we hurt, we have pain, and that eats up nutrition. Plus we have inflammation, that eats up nutrition. Plus we have muscle tightness, and that eats up nutrition. So those years, decades, a lifetime, that's your body running at with your, not really gas tank, but let's just say your gas tank, with your nutritional gas tank on low. So your body can't operate correctly, your body can't run correctly, and your body certainly can't heal correctly. So there is no fix for Leviquin tendinitis or fluoroquinolone side effects. For instance, rest just isn't going to do it. In some cases it might, but you certainly don't want to rely on that. And if it's been more than six months or a year, you really don't want to rely on that. Anti-inflammatories will never fix you. Corticosteroid injections or pills are a bad idea. Fluoroquinolones and corticosteroids research show are just a bad idea. So you might not want to let your doctor give you corticosteroid injections or pills if uh, you have fluoroquinolone side effects. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So there's that. Um, so what should you do? What should you do if you have Leviquin side effects? So let's break that down a little bit. So in my experience, Let's say that's the one year mark. People, without doing anything, they'll either get better within a year or they won't. And if they don't, that means that's the decades and lifetime kind of thing. So every person is different. Every person's particular scenario is different. So there's no way to tell which of those you are. So you could wait for a year and see what happens, but I wouldn't recommend it. In all these scenarios, we want to speed up your recovery as much as possible. Do not rely on rest. Do not rely on time. Do not rely on your body healing like if you stepped on a nail because it's just not the same thing. It's an entirely different animal. Step on a nail, your body heals. If you're having Leviquin side effects, then it kind of puts you in a hole, sort of like the nutrition. It puts you in a hole, and you're down here. So until you fill up the hole with good things, then your body just can't get out of the hole by itself. It's just not going to. Unless you have the minor... The minor scenario where you'll get better in a year without doing anything in particular. And good for you if you are one of those, but most people are over here. Or at least most people I work with are over there. So your doctor's going to tell you to rest, give it time, do some physical therapy, get some massage. In general, your doctor's going to tell you a lot of things that aren't going to help you. For whatever reason, your doctor doesn't understand how Levitin works with the body. 
which is kind of mind-boggling that they don't, but they don't, and they don't seem to put 10 minutes into researching it. So they tell you to rest and take muscle relaxants and get some PT and give it some time and take some painkillers, etc. And, uh, and that's just not going to work because like stepping on a nail, those might be good for stepping on a nail, but they're not good for Levaquin side effects. So what should you do to get rid of the side effects of Levaquin? Well, you need to, and this is the really short, vague version, you need to fix the nutritional depletion in a big way. If you have mitochondrial, mitochondrial damage, you need to support that population, that herd, to regrow, get strong, make your connective tissue strong again. If you have DNA damage, you have to do one and two, and you have to get your body so healthy, essentially, or working more optimally, so essentially your good DNA can outgrow the bad DNA, which is not ideal, it's not optimal, there's no simple fix, but we shoot for the best we can possibly do. And you gotta do what you gotta do. And with this case of Levigan tinnitus, you really gotta do what you gotta do, because it's it can be serious, serious business. So that's a big answer. There's a lot going on there. I can't tell you that in any shorter period of time. That's why Carrie and I put together the fluoroquinolone toxicity solution. It says a little bit about why you hurt, and the rest is exactly what you need to know and do to help get your body back on track to be able to heal, to be able to recover, and to be able to overcome your Levaquin side effects. If you'd like to find out more about Levaquin tendonitis, visit the website, tendonitisexpert.com, and find the appropriate page.